Hello, this is Avenue X's second video on the lip reading for sugar. That would cover the entirety of Word of Honor, Shan He Li. Last time I stopped around episode 14, so today we're gonna take it all the way to the end of the drama. Same as the first video, it doesn't cover every little bit that has been changed in post-productions because not all the changes are actually necessarily related to sugars. Also, I need to warn you, because I'm taking it to the very end of the drama, if you haven't caught up with the drama and you really hate spoilers, I'll leave the time code in the description of this video, letting you know when I'm gonna talk about what line in what episode, so you know where to stop. So let's head right into it. First thing, episode 14, there isn't a line in the drama that got changed in dubbing, but there is a line that was omitted in the drama version which existed in the book version. Right at the end when the two male leads had a big quarrel and Zhou Zishu left. Before that, Wen Kexing was saying, luckily, luckily, and then there's no future lines. Whereas in the book, he actually said one line. Xing hao, wo hai mei you te bie xi huan ni. Luckily, I haven't yet liked you too much. I don't think that's true though. He has totally fallen and he probably is not 100% aware of that. In episode 16, there is a scene that's not related to the two male leads, but very interesting. It's related to Xie and Eve. Yeah, that's how they're called in China. The Scorpion King and his adopted father. There's a flashback scene that shows you Scorpion King is the person responsible for killing the young man that showed up many episodes earlier. In the drama currently airing, you'll hear him saying, This king calling himself, Moji plotting and strategizing, How can I bear other people messing with my plan? Making a huge ambition come true. Which is referring to, my adopted father doesn't need anyone else. I am more than enough, so I got rid of you. Which actually kept the essential meaning of the original lines, but took out all the implications of his real relationship with his adopted father. What's really spoken when they filmed the drama by the actor um, is Yi <coughs> comes from an ancient prose. What it means is on the side of your bed. How can you bear another people snoring away? Which means you cannot bear any other people getting into your territory. Because this is much more direct about first, I am the monopolizing person of the adopted son and the father relationship. Also on the but so I, <laughs> the scriptwriter is very clever about suggesting things here, but it's kind of too obvious, that's why they changed it. And the second line is, 一夫身边有我一个就够了. So it's not making something ambitious happening. I would be enough. It is by the side of my adopted father, if there has to be one. I am enough. Episode 17, quite a lot of famous moments. First, when Cheng Lin was practicing and Ye Bai Yi, Wen Keqing, Zhou Zishu were all watching there. Wen Keqing said a line and pretty much just doing the advertisement for the uh, nut company. In the drama version, you hear him saying, I had to queue a long queue to buy this nuts. Whereas the real line here is, The first part is the same. Uh, I queued a long queue, but the later part is to buy it for you. So it's being specific about, you know, I got this for you. Then after he got drunk and they got back to the bedroom, Wen Keqing reached out and then Zhou Zishu turned away. After that, Zhou Zishu said a line and the dubbing changed a little bit of it. In the drama version, you'll hear him saying, I can't bear looking at how pretentious you are as if you are wearing a mask. So that's the meaning of that line. The actor Zhang Zhehan actually said when they filmed it, so it's very similar. They changed the heng heng ji ji to jia mo jia yang. And then in the second line, they added, you know, dai zhe mian ju wearing a mask. Whereas in the original one, there isn't a wearing the mask. I cannot bear looking at your not 
just being pretentious, but being heng heng ji ji. Heng heng ji ji is a word to describe somebody being not straightforward and trying to get what they want by acting a little bit girly and like a child. So it's like, mm, 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 mm. you make that sound. Mm, 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 mm. So that word is actually describing the sound people make when they try to get something. Heng heng ji ji. And then the second line is jia mu jia yang, putting on a pretense. I'm just guessing maybe they find uh, heng heng ji ji is too girly. They're trying to be extra cautious. At the very, very end of this episode, we have that beautiful moment when Zhou Zishu has already left. And then Wen Kexing is on the bed looking as he walks away and said very quietly to himself, Previously, Zhou Zishu is like, let me see your heart, which is let me see your secret. Let me see who you really are and then I can help you. Wen Kexing's reply here is, After you've seen it, You wouldn't think of me as your friend anymore. What he actually said was, After you've seen it, you wouldn't want to bother with me. You would just walk away from my life. So it's a little bit more direct expression of uh, emotion. So I can see why they changed that. What I've heard about this drama is in their original script, it's much more daring than the version that you see today. While they were filming it, they already tuned it down and in post-production, they tuned it down even more. So the fact is, word of honor, if it was made exactly as the original script is, we probably would be screaming like, all the time. Maybe in the parallel universe. Moving on to the very classic episode 18. When they got out of the cave, they were running away from all those drug zombies. They had a pit stop and had a few uh, lines of chick fight <laughs> before they head over and crossed that big canyon. Wen Kexing was patting on Zhou Zishu. In the drama, you'll hear him saying, which means you're acting so arrogantly, therefore you got striking by lightning. This line is so changed. He actually said, Chang is a field, Qing is emotion. So Qing Chang here means the battleground for love. Because you're De Yi, which means you get what you want. So you're happy, you're satisfied with your love affairs, with what happens with your romantic life. Therefore, Zhan Chang Shi Yi. You lose what you want at the actual battlefield, which is they've just fought off like the zombies and Zhou Zishu was complaining. There are only a few times I've been chased like this. So yeah, Wen Kexing is so on the nose about that because you have me, you know, you're happy with having me. Therefore, heaven is fair and makes your life difficult at fighting off zombies. Now we're gonna take a big jump, not because there hasn't been any changes happening among those episodes in the middle, it's just because they're not very related to, you know, sugar and stuff. Episode 28, very beautiful scene, Chinese New Year's Eve dinner scene with really terrible food. Like that chicken soup looks like just hot water. Wen Kexing and Zhou Zishu had this exchange. He drinks and he said two lines. 无人灯下对酒, 无人为我心忧. Nobody would drink with me under the light. So it means at night. And 无人为我心忧, nobody would understand what I feel sad about. So he said, had I not met you, had I not had this life, that would be my life. But the actor actually said, 无人灯下对酒, first line the same, second line, <clears throat> get ready. 无人与我白头, no one together with me, whitehead. So that's a direct translation, had I not met you. There would be nobody to grow old with me, to grow to the point where we both have white hair. <sighs> yeah, I see why. Uh, it has to be changed. There's no way this line is gonna get through censorship. No way. And then episode 32, the literal cliffhanging scene. When Wen Kexing was standing there facing off all the heroes who want to destroy him, Zhou Zishu hops down, walks up to him. Before they turned around and faced all the enemies, Zhou Zishu looked into Wen Kexing's eyes and said this line in the drama version, 你省省吧, which means stop making this much trouble. But what's actually spoken, if you slow it down, pay attention. I've looked at scene many times trying to confirm it and I'm pretty sure it is true. As people have managed to find out, what's actually spoken by Zhang Zhehan at that moment was, 你是我的人, you are my person. Do you remember in the first video I said, he had this scene when he said, you are the person 我认定, I'm assured of you, you are the person that I pick, there's no one else. This is the same thing. Just didn't bring out the 认定, but 
literally is 你是我的人 you are my person. Literal translation. Yeah, I can see why it has to be changed. Also, I think this is a line from the original book too. Episode thirty-five, the、uh, absolute heart-wrenching episode after the fight. Wen Keqing was almost passed out, and we have this very classic scene in the book and also in the drama. That very classic hand-touching scene that. You know, in every kind of ways, you know, like symbolic, religious, however you want to interpret that. But Zhou Zishu had a line spoken in the drama. You'll hear him saying, "Lao Wen," literally is calling Wen Keqing. But actually, what was spoken by the actor was, "Ni zhen me le," which is, "What happened to you?" What is going on with you? It's a question about your condition. I'm feeling like maybe they feel calling the name actually is a more in the moment thing than say nizam look, because you can totally see like you know he's hurt. He got poked through by a sword in his chest. Clearly, he's not well. It's more like trying to get a better logic for that scene. Now we're heading to the last episode, which is a heavy, heavy, heavy episode. Okay, so sit tight. This is important for the version you watch. If it's a direct translation, which I do not know, okay, from the Chinese drama version, then it will confuse you to no end because you just cannot figure out what they were doing. Is it B? Is it H? Happy ending, bad ending, open ending? What the heck is going on? I've already explained that in my live stream video. I've mentioned everything I know about the ending and why it ended up like that. If you're curious. Go ahead and check that out. Pretty much after that, you will be happy about it. The lip dubbing went crazy about the end of episode thirty-six and two major chunks. One is a sugar line when they are in the treasure cave. One is afterwards the last scene. So first, let's talk about the treasure cave. When Zhou Zishu read the Liu He Shen Gong, that scroll that says you know how to practice that crazy technique. Ye Bai Yi knows. Wen Keqing was standing on his side and started commenting on practicing that and what is the price you have to pay for it. You'll hear him say, 也就是说，即便活着离开此处，以后也得长久隐居极寒之地，食雪饮冰，没完没了的活下去。也就是说 ，That means， 即便活着离开此处 ，even though we can live here alive. 以后也得长久隐居极寒之地。In the future, we had to live in seclusion in extremely cold places. 食雪饮冰 ，eat snow and drink ice， 没完没了的活下去。Live indefinitely. But what's actually spoken is much more、uh, <laughs> personal. So what the actor actually said was， 也不知道你我若是无缘离开此处，你愿不愿意和我？从此食雪饮冰，没完没了的活下去啊 ！So there are similarities for sure. Looking at the two paragraphs, 也不知道 I'm not sure, or I cannot tell. 你我若无缘离开此处 ，if you and me cannot leave this place. So instead of saying, you know, even if we leave the place, he actually said, if we cannot leave this place. 你愿不愿意和我从此食雪饮冰 ？Would you want? Would you be willing to from now on with me eat snow, drink ice, 没完没了的活下去啊 ？Live indefinitely. Honestly, I don't see there's a huge problem with that. It definitely is not like on the nose about like being really intimate and stuff, but it clearly is suggesting living with me. It's emphasizing that picture of two lovebirds living in their own little Eden and heaven and yeah. So it got changed. Now head over to the last bit. Really, really complicated, but I'll try my best to explain it to you. So the Chengling telling stories to his students. It's so overdubbed. Literally every line in that is changed. Once you decipher what's actually spoken by the actor playing the adult Chengling, you can be ninety percent sure that the original happy ending is a happy ending. In the drama, you hear Chengling say, "Okay, it's a long line, so forgive me for reading it literally off my notebook like this." 必须有一个人甘心情愿将自己肉身当成炉鼎，将辛苦修炼的真气反输给练功者。无论你武功如何精深，就算一时还没爆体而亡，终会全身经脉尽断。A quickly, roughly translated. There has to be one person who willingly sacrificed their body as the furnace to pass this zhen qi, the qi that he practiced and cultivated, put that into the other person's body. No matter how strong their capability and strength is, even if the person doesn't die on the spot. Exploding that type of thing. Eventually, their jimai would all be broken. So jimai is your kind of energy passage. <sighs> Whereas <laughs> intense lip reading would show what actually was spoken by the actor was. Uh huh. Uh huh. Get ready. 必须两人同心，相守相护，还要全心全意的互认为知己。因之间保持相爱，才能在处境危机之际传递真气，度过难关。
Then there's a line that's cut out because it cuts to the student. We don't know, you know, what's spoken by the lip, but we can guess what's spoken. The second half of that line was 被对方保护的不死人. It has to be two people having the same heart, so same kind of mind. 相守相互, accompany and protect each other. 还要全心全意地互认为知己. Also, they have to full-heartedly recognize each other as their 知己, the person who knows you perfectly. And this line is weird, the one line after, right? I literally stared at the actor's mouth for like 20 times and I think it's actually, yeah, true, but it sounds very, very obvious, which is 因之间保持相爱, literally means because between them, they kept the state of being in love with each other. Literally like that, super direct. 才能在处境危机之际, because of that, then they can at the times when the other person is in danger. 传递真气, passing that qi to each other, 度过难关, so that they can get over those difficult obstacles. Then it's the line that cuts to the student, so we don't know what Chen Ling said, but when the shot comes back to his face, he said, 被对方保护的不死人, undead person being protected by the other one. So people assume and guessed the line when the shot is on the student was, therefore, when they succeed at practicing Liu He Shen Gong, they would become undead as they are protected by the other person. <laughs> so as you can see, What's actually filmed on the day was really direct because it's saying these two people have to love each other so they can help each other and therefore they become undead. If you have further questions about the ending, really, and just, just all the ins and outs and all the information that is floating on the internet and figuring out what it is, go and watch my live stream. I have time coded it so you don't have to waste your life and time and can head over straight to that particular point when I talked about the ending. So this will conclude my two videos on the lip reading for Word of Honor. I don't think something like this has ever happened in Chinese drama land regarding a BL drama that airs that changed so much of its lines but then still leave you clues for you to figure out what's actually spoken. Obviously, it's also because um, there aren't that many BL dramas to start with. Hopefully, these two videos have been informative and helpful to you for you to dig out even more sugar out of this already surprisingly uh, satisfying BL adaptation drama. Shang Keling, Word of Honor. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy sugar digging.